Welcome to the Edhocracy Show. On today's show... Attending a conference. Deductible. The fancy new camera I've been wanting. Deductible. Uh, Netflixing and chilling? Mm, possibly deductible. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm JD Melville. And I'm David Landine, and welcome to the Adhocracy Show, where we geek out about advertising, marketing, art, and design. Yeah, and thank you so much for coming and joining us. Now, first off, we've got to take care of a little uh, matter here. Um, if you've watched any of our previous episodes, you know that we are running the 100 for 100 contest. It's an art contest where you can win $100 by submitting a piece of art to celebrate our 100th episode. Yeah, and the more people share, the more money. It's, it's starting at 25, it's going to go to 100. Um, just check out this video. Click that little eye up there. It'll take you to the video that, that explains the contest. Um, but yeah, submit designs, doodles, um, calligraphy, anything that you want. Um, and the winner could win uh, up to $100. Okay. Pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. Get on that, people. Now, uh, yesterday. 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 Was, was your deadline for taxes. And if you were like most people, you were sitting there and you are saying, I could have deducted that. Oh, wait. Or why do I have to pay so much? Like... You know, like all of a sudden you're just like, wait, oh, you why of, wasn't I keeping track of this? You sort of or... play the game of, did I hold money for the government or did the government hold money for me? Right. Um, and uh, hopefully that you kind of went through some of the things with your accountant. Now, maybe you're the person that's like, I just do it for fun, uh, freelance out of my house. You may want to consider getting a business and being able to deduct some of the things that you have to pay for. And so, so there's actually a lot more deductions than you would think. Yeah. Yeah, so we are going to go through 10 deductions that you probably didn't know you could get, or maybe you did, but we're going to discuss it. Now, we do have to give it a disclaimer. We are not tax professionals. Nor do we proclaim to be know-it-alls. Commenters. Yeah, yeah, we we read that, all right? <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't know. So, um, as always, make sure that you talk to a tax professional. Um, they will be able to give you the exact ways of deducting some of these things. They'll give you... Um, things that you need to do to take care of these things, um, how you need to document. Those things are very important. But these will at least give you some ideas of what you can do uh, to deduct some of the things that you have to pay for. All right. What do we got first? So our first one, of course, we are creatives. We are visual people. Um, and we work on hardware, software, and subscriptions. Um, this, of course, includes your computer. It, it includes Doo -doo. Ta -da, um, cameras. It includes cell phones, tablets. All of those things that um, you need to perform your job. Yeah, they, they are the things that you use to do your job. Now, as well, um, you've got things like you can get some really cool tools like laser cutters. You can get plotters, vinyl, 3D printers. That stuff could also be deductible because it's all part of what we do. Um, and then, of course, we use um, professional software like uh this Creative Suite, Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. um, you, mm -hmm. you know, Dropbox. A lot of these things that, that you have um, subscriptions to, that you use, the software, um, it's actually something that you can deduct. So, so that's software. Hardware, now that's, you're, you're, we're talking like a camera, a laser, like things that are going to be pretty expensive. And there's two ways of deducting these. There is the bulk deduction if you're not going to be using it for longer than I think five years, or there's the depreciation of assets. Yeah, that, that basically calculates you know per year how much you can take out, saying my, my computer is going to depreciate in about this amount of time. Yeah, so I, I use cameras, and I usually take the bulk deduction because I upgrade those every two to three years, so I want to get the full amount of the deduction I can, so rather than having to keep it and depreciate over five years, I just do it all right at the beginning when I buy so, it. So yeah, all, all of the things that you use to do your stuff. I mean, think of um, swatch books, uh, your your Pantone books. I don't use those for video. <laughs> you don't. Um, but office supplies, all of that stuff, deductible. Yep. All right, next up we have memberships. So these are memberships to groups, networks, societies, clubs. Um, so yeah, AIGA, um, you've got uh, the, the advertising, different AAAs, and you've got any of those membership groups, those, those can actually be deducted. So really, that's one of the things that you need to keep track of. You need to make sure that you are, by knowing these, that's why we're doing this, I know, this seems kind of 
counterintuitive that we're doing this the day after tax day. But this is like preparing you for next year. So you got to start keeping track now so you can get the yeah. maximum deduction next year. Yeah, you can talk to your tax professional and then start start now because if you fall behind, you're going to be like, oh, I, you know, I, whatever. Um, another one, of course, is conferences and events. Conferences and events, especially for visual people, there are tons out there. There's 99U, there's How, there's Adobe Max. There's, there's... NAB, there's... Uh... No, that's the one I used to go to. <laughs> what else is there? Well, you tell us. But but there there are a myriad of deductions for conferences event. Of course, food. Uh, when when you have food um, for business purposes mm -hmm. uh, at conferences, you know, away. Um, there's VidCon. VidCon. There's, there you go. There's uh, uh was the CV, C, CVX CVX Live. Live. Yeah. So the for the for the YouTubers out there, like these things, when you go there. There's actually a lot of deductions that you can take from those. Yeah, I mean, anything that you spent for the purpose of building your abilities and talents, lodging, food, travel, all of that stuff is deductible. Um, and so one of the things that people do is they make a vacation of it. Um, you can kind of make it. Not everything would be deductible. No. You know, you can't. Can't deduct Disneyland. Unless you were doing it for work, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who's in the theater world, and he goes to New York to see musicals. Of course, that's enjoyable, right? I enjoy it. But that is research for him. So he gets to deduct those kind of things. Oh. So uh, as with a lot of stuff that we'll talk about today. So it may be good to mix business with pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Um, some of it is being able to kind of say, like, this is how it inspires me. This is how it helps me do my job better. You have to justify it. And then also keeping track of those things. You can't just kind of say, deduction, please. Well, it's like they say, everything is deductible until you get audited. That's <laughs> true. So our next part is um, inspiration and research. Um, this is where... This, this kind of connects to the, to the last one a little bit, but... So we'll go with, like, the absolutely deductible... Um, this would probably be like a going somewhere for inspiration, getting a book, buying something that you need to go through magazines, magazine subscriptions that you that you go to for inspiration. Um, then there's the gray area deductible like Netflix, because I watch it to get inspiration for video and study their camera work. Yeah. As a video guy, you can write down some of these things and prove that this is part of what your job is. The real question is, can my sister deduct it because I watch her Netflix? I don't think that's something you want to admit. <laughs> Maybe your sister could deduct it for her Hers, business purposes. Probably not for mine. But things like um, opera, movies, museums, um, you might be able to deduct some of it if you can prove how it's going to help you um, do that and also catalog those things. Yep. Make sure you keep track. There's um, a lot of good apps out there for that. Documentation is always important. Um, our next one is the home office deduction. Now, this is one that there's a lot of ifs, ands, and, and buts about. People are kind of like, well, if you do that deduction, you're going to get audited. Well, they've been a lot more lax on this one. Yeah. Um, this, this one basically says you have a dedicated room, a dedicated place of your home or rental where you actually do business. You actually, you know, do it. You actually frequently use it. Mm-hmm solely for business purpose. This can't just be a couch. It can't be a table. It can't be like, it has to be a dedicated space. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did find out this last year is that if you already haven't made any money, they don't let you take this deduction. <laughs> to not, there's only so much money that they let you use, that right. they let you lose. I mean, right. they, you, you can't really. Um, um, so there's, there's two different ways of calculating the simple method, which is $5 per square foot up to 300 square feet. Um, or you can do um, the regular calculating method where, where you keep track of uh, expenses, maintenance, repairs, utilities, all of that stuff. And then you have to kind of, you're able to deduct a po portion of that. Um, so, that, you know, anything that you make or do that benefits that room for your business, that's usually 100% deductible. So you might think of that. Um, as well... Um, so in our research and everything that we were going out to look at, there is one person that kind of said, okay, um, maybe having a second office is also a good idea. Um, you can you can deduct several offices if you have those different spaces. So you can have your home office where you do maybe administrative stuff, you answer things, and then a place where you go to work and store um, your samples, your, your equipment, things like that. Or a, a home office and then a separate studio yep. even would be would be good. Yeah, like um, for us, we could have our home office where we do our research, look at our scripts, create them, and then our studio where we come to actually do the show. 
So that's that's one thing that you, you have to look at the variations. You have to really, I mean, tax code is not simple <laughs> yet. Um, so that actually leads into the next one because having those two offices also helps you with business travel. Now, if you if you have a business outside of your home and you travel to that business from your home, you can't count that as business travel. You can't count the right. mileage. You can't going, count getting the gas. To, getting to work... And, go, um, and, and coming home, home. You, you can't count that. Unless you have a home office and like a home office in a studio or a home office in a... So you can count is, the travel again, from once from your home office to your studio. That would be counted. Yeah. So that, that can also help you out there. As long, and there's two ways of counting business travel. You can do it by, by mileage, mm-hmm. uh, how many miles you travel, and then there's a... Uh, cents per cents mile. Cents per mile. Or you can do it through gas, how much gas you spend. So, so you would have to take... Fill keep up. track. Either way, you have to keep track pretty well and, and document. Okay, I traveled here. Yeah. I did it for this. This is. And I know a lot of apps out there for small business try. They do it by mileage. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're able to. They just use your GPS. And it's a pr- it's a pretty good one um, to to do. And 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 that's the thing is any kind of travel that you do for your business. Um, if you have to go get supplies, if you're meeting with um, employees, if you're meeting with contractors, if you, if you're doing any business any travel for that both um, your own car or public transportation that is deductible. Also along with that is the food that you eat. And if you're traveling, if you're going to an event, if you're traveling, all that food is deductible. Um, just going along with food, if you are eating with clients, mm-hmm. if you are eating with business partners or people Networking in, groups. Yeah. So a lot of people say, you know, if you hire your family on, <laughs> if you... Like, Date night's deductible as long as you talk about the business. There's certain things. Again, gray area. We're not professionals. Talk to a tax professional. We, we have some friends and all of us are business owners. And usually when we get together, we're talking business. And that's something that, you know, what's working for you? What's, you know, how's this working out? Um, something that you can do. Uh, our next one is phone and internet. Um, going along with your home office, you are probably using your phone for business purposes to mm-hmm. call clients mm-hmm. to uh, you're also using internet you are absolutely using internet no never using internet <laughs> i am i'm am going this is i do everything with the youtube channel analytical or not, uh, not analytical and and what's the word analog analog yeah it's analog youtube <laughs> <laughs> you you write down the forms and submit them for our videos with the, All the ones and zeros <laughs> <laughs> please type this in please type this in anyway. um so Part of your um, cell phone and internet is can actually be deductible, of course. If you have a dedicated line for your cell phone, that's for business purposes. That entire line for business that only can be, can deductible. be deductible. Yeah, but um, even if it's not a, a dedicated line, like you're just your cell phone, there's a portion of time that you're going to use it for your business, and you can actually deduct that. Um, you you have to calculate your percentage. business, yeah, your percentage of how much you actually use it. Um, my wife has her phone for the flower shop. She can deduct pretty much you know, half the time, maybe even more of what she uses because she uses maps to deliver. She uses, uh, we can, we can catalog and prove this is how we use it. If you use it to entertain your children while you're working, <laughs> gray know. area, gray area, gray area, definitely a gray Get, area. Ask the, ask the chat professional. No. Um, okay. Next one is employee wages and contractors. So if you have employees and you pay them, that's deductible. Uh, contractors, if you need, if you need to hire somebody, so if, if I'm doing a video and I hire somebody to be a contractor for lighting or for the grip boy, I've always wanted to be a grip boy. Best boy. Best boy. Best boy. Yeah, it's it, grip it, and best boy. Yeah, okay, I messed that up. So anyway, those are those are deductible. Um, hiring again, like hiring your family to work for you. Yeah, if your if your family helps you, you can pay them a wage and. Uh, there, there are some tax professionals and people who have suggested that hiring your family also opens up some other things like um, being able to offer health insurance, insurance premiums, retirement accounts, all of that stuff that can be actually deductible as employees. Now, employees are a little bit, this is definitely somewhere you're, you're going to want a professional to talk to. There are tax liabilities and disability insurance and other things that go along with an employee that a contractor, you do not have to pay those things. So my seven-year-old doing their allowance, I don't have a seven-year-old, but like, you know, (laughs) their allowance, like, you're going to go clean the studio, you are a contractor. You could pay them. So, yeah, there's it. Yeah. If you can, if you can document and prove, yeah, you know, it's possible. You might get in trouble for child labor laws. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. Actually, for a seven-year-old, yes. For your 16-year-old son, maybe maybe not. not. 
Uh, business gifts. Now, business gifts are definitely a part of doing business. Uh, you send flowers for, you know, um, send flowers. Uh, you send flowers for birth, deaths. You send gift baskets. You send, you know, different gifts to say thank you for your business. Um, so that That is actually tax deductible. Um, one of the places I read is $25 per gift per um, recipient. Um, again, check with the tax perfection, professional. Um, uh, so here's the question. Let's say I'm in trouble for working too much of my business, and so I buy my spouse a gift so I can keep <laughs> doing my business. It's a business gift relating to the business, but I can only spend $25 on her. So I probably, it, probably, it might not be enough to be forgiven. Gray area. Gray area. Gray area. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, maybe some of your friends are your bus- are business contacts in different ways. <laughs> Hey, that's a, that's a good way of going. And lastly, legal and professional services. Now, anything like um, lawyers, uh, copyright lawyers, um, accountants, business coaches. Your tax professional. Yeah, contract lawyers. Any of those things um, that you pay for are actually tax deductible. Um, you can even do this for online professional services. So if you use like a legal online service that helps you create the contracts that you do for your clients, that stuff would be tax deductible. And of course, like, because we're talking about this, make sure that you ask your CPA or tax professional um, what you can deduct and what things um, maybe you haven't considered. They're going to be a great resource for you, um, especially because now you're at the beginning of a tax year and you've you've got a lot of stuff that you can start to count. So uh, talk to them, deduct it, hooray. What did we miss? What did I, I mean, there's a lot out there, so we probably missed a lot, but... <laughs> what did we get do wrong? You, do you have... Well, that's probably what we're going to hear in the comments. But did you hear anything that we... That, or do you have any tricks that you used that we didn't mention? That like, hey, I found this out. This is a great, great thing to do. Yeah, put that in the comments below or join us over on... Um... Or just tell us that we're wrong. Like, <laughs> like we know. Yeah, put, right. put that in the comments or join us over on um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you look into the 100 for 100 contest that we're doing. And thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting on this video and others. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you click the subscribe button. Um, that will let you know that we have a new episode. Monday's news, to, uh, Wednesday's our show. Ta-da! And Friday we have fun. So make sure that you subscribe. And uh, here's a video for you to watch so you can continue your journey on YouTube. Go taxes. Are you an independent contractor or freelancer? Independent contractors and freelancers work in a huge variety of fields. Medical professionals, sales reps, truck and taxi drivers, entertainers, athletes, real estate agents, engineers, accountants, government contractors, authors, and many, many others.